In this video, I'm going to describe half angle formulas and how we can use them to determine exact values of angles that we don't necessarily know values for. So again, half angle formulas is just kind of a technique that we use whenever we have to evaluate angles that are not the normal intervals around our unit circle. They're not the 30, the 45, or 60 degree increments. There's something else. So this is just another method that we can use to evaluate angles that aren't those special intervals. So here are the formulas that we use. Here's our half angle sine formula. Um, this positive and negative is going to be determined by where the angle is. So what quadrant the angle is in is going to determine whether it's positive or negative. Um, sine values are always positive in uh, the first and second quadrant. So if you have an angle in the third or fourth quadrant, it's going to be a negative value rather than positive. We're going to take the square root of this entire ratio. So this whole ratio is all underneath the radical. We're going to do 1 minus the cosine ratio and divide it by 2. We're going to do something similar for half angle cosine formula. Again, it's going to be positive or negative depending on what quadrant it's in. Um, cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. So anything in the second or third quadrant is going to have that negative symbol there. Again, we're taking the square root of this entire ratio, 1 plus the cosine, divided by 2. Tangent, you have two options. And again, it doesn't matter which one you choose. You just pick one, whatever one is your favorite. I prefer to use this first one, but that's just me. So you're going to do 1 minus the cosine ratio divided by the sine ratio. And the reason why I choose this one is because I like my um, my subtraction here to be on the, in the numerator position rather than having to do fraction math in the denominator, which is a little trickier, but you have your preference here. So you could also try the sine ratio divided by 1 plus the cosine ratio. All right, so let's practice applying these um, formulas. So here's why we use them. If we have to evaluate an angle, which is not our nice little increments that we know, um, if we actually double this, then we'll be able to use this half angle formula. So we want this to be equivalent to something. So if I double this angle and get 210 divided by 2, this is where we get our half angle form from because 210 divided by 2 is 105. So even though uh, we're doubling the angle, which would seem like we would use a double angle formula, it's not exactly true. We want it to be equivalent to this, so we have to double it in order to set it up as our half angle formula. All right, so that's going to be the first part. And generally, this first part is only there to remind us of what we're using. So it's going to be equal to this cosine formula, which is 1 plus cosine now of 210 is what we're using in our formula, divided by 2. So let's determine whether it's positive or negative that we're going to use. Because we're talking about the angle which is equivalent to 105 degrees, that would be in quadrant 2, where our cosine values are negative. So we're going to be using the negative out in front. Let's evaluate the rest here. Uh, 1 plus the cosine of 210. So if we think about 210, um, that would be over here. And this reference angle would be 30 degrees. 210 is 30 degrees more than 180, so that's our reference angle. So the cosine of 210 is the same as the cosine of 30 degrees, just in quadrant 3. And the cosine of 30 degrees is going to be square root of 3 over 2. And because we're in quadrant 3, that's a negative x value, so I'm going to make that minus. Now I could change that. Instead of adding a minus, let's just make it subtraction. So 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. Let's make sure we're all under the radical here. So this is still all over 2. Let's make sure we're taking the square root of all of it. 
in order to do the subtraction up top here and simplify, I have to get common denominators. So if I'm talking about uh, halves here, the equivalent for 1 would be 2 halves, or 2 over 2. So now I can do the subtraction. Still have that minus out in front. Up top now we have 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 2. And that is all being divided by 2, just keeping everything in the same spot. So now we have to think about how we divide fractions. So we got this fraction up top being divided by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Whenever you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to change that to be multiplied by 1 half. So now when I simplify, I multiply everything on top by 1. Well, multiplying everything up top by 1 would keep it the same. On the bottom, though, I have 2 times 2, which is 4. So I have one more simplifying step that I need to do. I can't take the square root of our top part anymore without turning it into a decimal. But I can take the square root of the bottom, because anytime you have a fraction under a square root, you can square root the top and the bottom. I only can square root the bottom to simplify. So the square root of 4 ends up being just 2. So because I've taken the square root of the bottom, it no longer gets the radical down there. So the radical is only on top. And this is actually the final answer. Can't do anything more with it without turning it into a decimal. But if you were to turn it into a decimal on your calculator, it should be equivalent to what your calculator tells you the cosine of 105 degrees is, which is a decimal value. And so on the calculator, I think this becomes uh, negative 0.26 or something similar to that. And if you actually find the cosine of 105 on your calculator, it should be the same. All right, so there is a way that you can check your math and make sure you get the correct answer. All right, let's try another example here. This time we'll do it in radians. We'll find the sine of some complicated angle here, 5 eighths pi. So we could use sum and difference formulas. That's one way that we could evaluate this. But I want to practice using our half angle formulas. So we know this is equivalent to this being double divided by 2. So if I double this, I get 10 eighths. 10 eighths, right? 10 eighths pi divided by 2. But I want to simplify things. So rather than 10 eighths, I'm going to say it's 5 fourths all over 2. So really what we're doing is this. Sine of 5 fourths divided by 2. So that's our half angle sine formula. So let's substitute everything we're using here. It's going to be 1 minus the cosine of 5 fourths pi all over 2. Let's determine whether it's going to be a positive or a negative value first. So this angle measurement is slightly more than pi over 2. That would be 4 eighths pi. So we're in quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, our sine value is positive. So I know I'm going to use the positive form of this equation. All right, let's simplify under the radical here. Cosine of 5 fourths pi. If I think about that, let's see. Let's scoot it over a little bit. Draw it a little bigger. 5 fourths would be somewhere in there. Sorry, not there. More than 4 fourths, so that would be more than 1 pi. And so my reference angle would be another fourth. So really, the cosine of pi over 4 in quadrant 3 is equivalent to this. The 
cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And in quadrant 3, that's a negative x value, so it would be the negative value. All right, so let's plug that into our formula. So we got 1 minus, minus a negative, so we're going to make that a positive. And we still have divided by 2 on the bottom. So in order to do the math up here in the numerator position, we need common denominators. I'm going to turn this 1 into 2 over 2. So now we can rewrite it as... 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 2, all divided by 2. Be careful here, we're still all under the radical. So I'm dividing two fractions now. Anytime I divide two fractions, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm doing 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 times 1 half which gives me 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4. So when we multiply the top, we just get the same thing. We're multiplying by 1. On the bottom, we have 2 times 2, which gives us 4. Now, if I take the square root of the top, I can't really do anything with that. So I'm going to leave it as square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. On the bottom, though, I can take the square root of 4, so that hops out of the radical. No more radical on the bottom. We just are left with the square root of 4, which is 2. So there's our final answer. If we check our work. We're going to be in radian mode, since we're using radians. And if I find the sine of 5 pi over 8, I think I get about 0.92. And if I convert this into a decimal, I should end up with the same decimal. And I'm able to check my work and know that I'm correct. So this is our final answer in ratio form. All right, I don't think I have time to do another one because these are pretty long, but um, that's just one example of um, a method that you can use to evaluate angles that are not necessarily your nice little intervals. So you could use sum and difference formulas, but you could also use this technique called half angle formulas and you should be able to get equivalent answers. So good luck using half angle formulas if you choose to.